Good evening. I will call this virtual meeting of the Housing Authority for the City of Salem for Tuesday, May 26, 2020 to order. If the recorder will call the roll. Vice Chair Kayser. Present. Commissioner Anderson. Yes, all. Commissioner Nanke is absent and in his place is Trevor Phillips filling in as, as guest counselor. Here. Commis Commissioner Leung. Here. Commissioner Osik. Here. Chair Hoy. Here. Commissioner Nordyke. Here. Commissioner Lewis. Here. Thank you. And if you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Commissioner Kayser, the consent calendar. Do we have any, uh, first of all, do we have any additions or deletions? We do not have any additions or deletions. Thank you. Do we have a motion on the consent calendar? Yes, I move the consent calendar. For a second. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry, uh, I didn't catch you who the second was. Lewis. Lewis, thank you. Councilor Kayser. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There is only one item, uh, item 2.1A, which are the April 27, 2020 draft Salem Housing Authority minutes. Any discussion? Will the recorder please take the, the vote? Mr. Leung. Aye. Commissioner Osik? Aye. Chair Hoy? Aye. Commissioner Nordyke? Aye. Vice Chair Kayser? Aye. Commissioner Lewis? Aye. And Commissioner Anderson? Aye. Thank you, the motion passes. Uh, we have no public hearings. Uh, no special orders of business, but we do have an information report, and I see Nicole Utes, our housing administrator, with us. And I would like to start, before you start your presentation, Ms. Utes, I would like to ask you a question. Um, and that's regarding, you know, we have a lot of vulnerable people in our, in our housing units throughout the city. And I'm just curious how they're doing during this pandemic. Are they, how are, how are people making uh, making their way or people, or do we have many, an outbreak at all? Or can you just kind of give us a little bit of a status on the COVID situation? Certainly, I'm Nicole Utes. I'm the Housing Administrator for Salem Housing Authority. I can tell you that out of all of the owned managed properties of Salem Housing Authority, we have no COVID-19 confirmed or presumptive cases at this time. Our tenants are managing well. Um, obviously, there is some challenges with layoffs, different circumstances with uh, distance learning, uh, but overall, everybody is doing well. The Housing Authority has stepped in as a team and is being extremely supportive of all of our clients. Even though our offices may not be open to the public, all 46 staff members are working behind the scenes to ensure that everybody is taken care of, that tenant requests are still being done quickly, that rent's being paid to landlords, that work orders are being completed. Uh, behind the scenes, we, we really haven't skipped a beat and everything is still going well. That is excellent to hear. I really appreciate it. And I'm just going to say that, you know, none of that would be possible, especially the, uh, the, the, the health of our tenants without the just excellent work of you and your staff. And I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Please pass that along to everyone. It's, it doesn't go unnoticed. Definitely. I will. It's, it's been a challenging time but it's been a, a great team effort and it really came down to educating our clients, uh, keeping our buildings safe and, and sanitary at all times and ensuring all of our seniors have face masks and what they need to, to be able to function on a daily basis. There's been some real challenging times when, when the transportation services were down we stepped in and made sure things got delivered that were absolutely essential items down to toilet paper, medication, anything that might have to keep them going. Excellent. Before we get into other questions, did you have anything from your manager report that you wanted to share with us? I do. I wanted to bring up 
the, the statistics on the page regarding our tenant occupancy for our buildings, many of you may not be aware, or you probably are aware that back in the end of uh, the winter last year, we closed on several large construction projects right before all the COVID-19 hit. And we've continued all five of those construction projects through this entire, uh, during this entire time. Four of those projects require a lot of relocation, a lot of coordination, a lot of safety and additional measures being taken. You, the occupancy numbers that you see on this report are not a reflection of what the housing authority typically does on a regular basis. So you're seeing some lower numbers such as Northgate, scattered site homes, different things like that. We wanna just ensure you that those are a reflection of units that are not currently occupied and under construction or renovation, and that those families are fully being taken care of and we intend to fully occupy all of the units as soon as they're returned to us in a, a full remodel capacity. The units are coming along beautifully. I don't know if any of you've been out to any of our sites to, to see the, the facelift that's going on, uh, but Meadowlark, Northgate, Livingston, they're all uh, coming along wonderfully. New windows, new siding, new landscaping, new trash enclosures. It's pretty much from top to bottom. And our contractors are doing an excellent job of keeping it going during through all the pandemic and we're keeping compliant with all the regulatory re requirements of the program. That's fantastic. Commissioner Anderson, did you have a question? Thank you, I'm not, yeah, I'm not muted. Uh, thanks, Nicole. I agree with Councillor Hoy, his preliminary comments, and I talked to you this afternoon and expressed those and asked that you also pass them on to your staff. Uh, you already answered one question that you and I discussed about, that's the occupancy rates. I have another one, and I'm looking at the HRAP statistics on, the, oh, I don't know, the third page of the management report, and I'm looking uh, at, you say, uh, it's a graph or table up at the top, 249 currently enrolled, but only 49 are currently housed. I had a big concern about that and you assuaged it very nicely and I hope you could do it to the rest of the council too. Sure. So as you can see the statistical numbers, the 249 is what's currently enrolled into the program. That includes a total for 282 that are enrolled plus their family members. 49 of those are housed and 57 of them are unhoused and being worked with our staff members to, to get housed. And during that, so the other amount of individuals have actually moved on to the Section 8 program and graduated from the program and are now currently under stable housing through the Section 8 program. So in effect, it's a double success. You got them into the HRAP program and then you got them out of the HRAP program into uh, the voucher program. That's correct. And we're continuing through the pandemic. We've actually made um, four placements during the pandemic time, but seven individuals total that were housed. Now all we have to do is get HUD to increase the amount of the vouchers and we'll really be off and running. We, we are at capacity, as I spoke to you earlier today. Our voucher program, you'll, you're seeing our statistics, we're one of the few housing authorities, we're at full capacity pretty much at this point. We are requesting additional mainstream vouchers in attempt to keep placing individuals in need in our area. The one comment that I will make in the community report section is that um, you'll see that the tenant request numbers as of today, we've done a total of 134 tenant requests, meaning individuals have lost some sort of income into their household. The overall housing assistance payment has increased our output of HAP for $24,340 every single month due to those tenant requests due to loss of income. Thank you. Uh, Director Rutherford. Nicole could also provide an update on Redwood Crossings as well. She had some information she was sharing with me earlier today that I think you might be interested in. Excellent. So the much anticipated Redwood Crossings, which is our 37 unit permanent supportive housing complex with six transitional respite units is nearing the end of its completion. They're scheduling for substantial completion the middle to end of June. This 
also plays into effect a little bit with the one set of hardware that we're still waiting on that's coming from the East Coast that is being slightly delayed. So we're highly anticipating that so for it to arrive. But the complex is painted new siding windows. Everything's turning out uh, beautiful and we're looking forward to, to getting that project up and going. We are working with the Emergency Operations Center to ensure the safety of all of our clients when we do open those doors and get it open in the, the safest manner possible. Excellent, thank you. Are there any other questions for Ms. Utes? Um, yes, I have a question, um, just Councillor Leon. Yeah. Um, I yes, had, go ahead. I had lost reception, so I, I might have um, missed a, a section that you might have addressed. Um, first, I just want to say, you know, thank, what, I thank you for doing such a great job with getting the masks out for distribution to our seniors, youth, and families most in need, 410 masks. That's amazing, and I'm, I'm very proud of uh, and, and excited to hear that um, the kind of outreach that the, the department's been doing. Um, I had a question about the H, HRAP statistics evicted after voucher. Um, there was four listed. Um, are you still supporting those individuals who were evicted? Typically, those are individuals that have lost the connection. We attempt to continue to try to work with them. But once they've gone through the entire homeless rental assistance program and they've exceeded their allotment of funds for that, they've gone to the voucher program. And for various reasons, they may be even two years into the voucher program, have maybe taken a few steps back backwards and not compliant with either regulatory, criminal, or some other uh, course that we're just unable to salvage the ability to keep them on the voucher program. They also have the right to reapply for any of the programs through the ARCHES program. Thank you. Thank you, and I will just make staff and others listening aware that we have at least two counselors that are having intermittent technical issues. So if people are not responsive right away, it's because they uh, we're having a couple of folks that keep dropping out and they keep coming back. So just be aware of that. Are there any other questions for staff? Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Nordyke. Uh, I'm mostly just raising my hand to make sure you can see that I'm raising your hand. Uh, I'm raising my hand. I can't see any one right now i can see myself and i can hear but i can't see any presentation so i think we should just keep moving forward i don't want to bog things down but just know that i'm blind all i can do is listen to the audio of the hearing right now thank you anybody else all right seeing no further business for the housing authority of the city of salem i will adjourn this meeting mr mayor of the city of Salem to order. If the uh, recorder would please call the roll. Board member Kayser. Present. Board member Anderson. Likewise. Board member Danke is absent. Guest counselor Phillips. Board member Leung. Here. Board member Osik. Present. Board member Hoy. Here. Board Member Nordyke. Here. Board Member Lewis. Here. And Chair Bennett. Here. Uh, Councillor Hoy, any additions or deletions? We do have one addition to the agenda. It's a uh, just a correction on a staff report on item 2.3A. All righty. Anything else you want to go over on the consent calendar? I move approval of the consent calendar. Second. Second, Kayser. Thank you. The consent calendar consists of the uh, April 27, 2020 urban renewal uh, agency minutes and 2.2A acceptance of the Jory Apartments Tax Increment Finance, uh, I'm sorry, Funding District. And item 2.3A, Fairview Urban Renewal Area Small Business Forgivable Loan Program. Item 2.3B, Riverfront Downtown Urban Renewal Grant Program Exception for 990 Broadway LLC. And that concludes the consent challenge. Okay. I don't see any polls, so yes, uh, Councillor Phillips. So uh, I guess Councillor Phillips here, uh, just under 2.3A, uh, we included the awards two and three as affected, but I, I think ward one may also be affected. 
Okay. I, I checked. Right, we'll put them in there now. too. Okay. We'll just put the whole council in. Right? <laughs> Everybody's always pleased with these kinds of programs. Um, right. Any other any other discussion on this? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Oops, I can't do that. We're going to do a roll call. I apologize. Cool. Now I know where you're all going to vote. So. Okay. Board Member Anderson. Aye. Board Member Nanke is absent. Board Member Kayser. Aye. Board Member Osik. Aye. Board Member Hoy? Aye. Board Member Nordyke? Aye. Board Member Lewis? Aye. Board Member Leung? Aye. And Chair Bennett? Aye. And Chair Bennett, we need a vote and a second for the uh, addition to the agenda as well. That was unanimous. I watched everyone's lips move. Thank you. Oh. I can see you, Councillor Nordyke. I watched you. Okay. Um, I think that's it. We're adjourned. I'm going to call to uh, order the Salem City Council meeting for May 26th. If the recorder would please call a roll. Councillor Kayser. Present. Councillor Anderson. Here. Councillor Nakey is absent. Guest Councillor Phillips. Here. Councillor Leung. Here. Councilor Osik? Here. Councilor Hoy? Here. Councilor Nordyke? Here. Councilor Lewis? Here. And Mayor Bennett? Here. Councilor Hoy, any revisions or additions? No. All righty. Excuse me, there is one uh, addition of a supplemental report. Uh, that we... At 3.A, 3A? Yes. Okay. My apologies. I move with approval of additions and deletions to the agenda. Second. Second by Kayser. Okay. Uh, if you want to call the roll. Council sure. Okay. Councillor Hoy? Aye. Councillor Nordyke? Aye. Councillor Lewis? Aye. Councillor Kayser? Aye. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Nanke is absent. Councillor Leung? Aye. Councilor Osik? Aye. And Mayor Bennett? Aye. Hey, this is an opportunity for members of the council to comment if anyone would like to comment. Don't see anyone. Ah, yes. Yes, Councilor Phillips. Um, I, first, I just wanted to, to thank everybody for allowing me to be here. Specifically, I wanted to thank um, Brad Nanke for inviting me to serve as a guest counselor tonight. Um, and I just, I greatly appreciate his 20 years of service. So I just want to thank him. Well, on behalf of all of us, congratulations to you as well for your uh, successful election. Thank you. Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I've been out uh, and about a little bit uh, in the last several weeks, about every what? other day or every third day, I go to the post office, I stop by city hall, I go to the grocery store and I notice people who are there, but the vast majority of them are doing what I do, but a lot of people aren't. And I'm just concerned about this because you're not just wearing the mask for yourself, you're wearing the mask for others. And it doesn't take long. You can see right here, I'm putting it on. This is a mask that was made for me by a neighbor. and. I know that the city has masks, and so if you cannot afford a mask or can't find one, you talk to city power, uh, Steve Powers at the city manager's office, and we'll get you a mask. And I see maybe the mayor's got one too. I don't know if it's a stack of them that the uh, National Mayors Association sent right. me. So we can get you a They're mask. Kind of there goes Councillor Hoy. It looks like a Trailblazers mask. I wasn't sure there. But the point is, Very exotic. it's easy to wear these. It shows civic involvement. It shows that you are concerned not just about your own self or your own freedom or whatever you want to call it, but you're concerned about society as a whole. So I urge every citizen of Salem, when they're out, to follow what the CD says, CDC says, wear your mask and uh, help society as a whole. 
and I'm taking it off now because there's nobody within six feet social distancing of me, but I really urge people to wear your mask. All right. Well, thank you, Councillor, for that help, helpful hint. Who else have we got that wants to share? Mr. Powers. Thank you, Mayor Bennett. Uh, Councillors, I'd like to give a, a brief uh, reopening update if, if that would be all right at this time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Staff, Take it long. Been, Go ahead. Tell us everything's <laughs> open. Come on. Well, <laughs> staff, staff have been preparing a reopening plan for city operations with Marion and Polk counties now in phase one. The city can begin implementation of a reopening. Many city services continued unchanged by the COVID-19 restrictions. City services are being delivered online and by phone. The Emergency Operations Center and departments have been preparing a plan that welcomes back the public and city employees into a safe environment. We are establishing a minimum required standard that all departments will meet when reopening. For some city operations, returning to in-person delivery is needed to ensure all city residents are served. Our focus for reopening is on services that some in our community are unable to access online. Lack of technology, complexity of an issue or question, or personal choice combined for the need to physically reopen some offices before others. Our first focus is on the permit application center, cashiers, and some library services. The permit application center will be opening June 22nd. Our cashiers will be opening June 22nd as well. Today, we started curbside book and material pickups at the Broadway location, the library location, and we will be continuing that. The dates allow time to complete changes to protect the health of customers and employees, most notably the installation of plexiglass and other barriers, barriers to the virus, and for policies that are being finalized with, in consultation with employees. Dates for other services, including summer recreation, are being set through discussions with departments and guided by the state's reopening phases. For all of our services, we will continue with the robust online availability that increased dramatically at the start of the Stay Home, Save Lives executive order. We're also putting in several precautions to protect health. Council discussed masks just now. We will be requiring masks for indoor services. Wearing masks is a proven method to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 virus. We will be expanding voluntary self-check health stations for employees. Public Works, Police, Fire, and 911 are currently providing self-check health stations. There is no record keeping and it's not mandatory, but we're strongly encouraging employees to check their health when they come into work. Gloves will be mandatory for positions that handle mail, checks, or cash directly from the public. And we're reviewing how to assist county public health with contact tracing. City service sites may have voluntary documentation of visitors in case there is a positive COVID-19 case. This information would then be shared with county health to trace back the people who may have been exposed. Our plan to reopen city offices and facilities is robust and is motivated by protecting the health and safety of the employees and community while serving the community. The plan is built upon the governor's public health framework for reopening Oregon. Council and the community will be kept updated as the city services reopening plan is finalized. I did wanna share with you uh, results from today's discussion uh, with the Emergency Operations Center and Department Director. So we will continue to provide updates to the mayor and counselors as the dates and plans for city services are, are finalized. Thank you. Thank you very much. On the library service, can you drop off books yet? Or do, you, do they want you to still hold them? You can, but we're encouraging you to keep the books. Okay. Uh, please, please, please keep the books. But if for some reason uh, you had to drop them off, uh, we we will take them. But we are encouraging uh, library customers to to keep the materials. The other question I get, and I'm sure other counselors do, is is playgrounds. What what's the timeline, or what's it look like? I don't know if timeline's the right question. That is one of the 
Yeah, that is one of the uh, uh, services that we're still evaluating. And also, uh, while the the guidelines are guidelines, we are uh, paying close attention to uh, the gu guidance from from the governor as the OHA and, and her staff are, are updating and revising earlier guidelines and restrictions regarding uh, public facilities such as playgrounds. And youth sports, kind of the same situation? Is that well, the, the actual youth sport leagues, our recreational programs, uh, we will have an update for mayor and counselors, uh, uh, could be as early as next week. Uh, staff right. met, staff met uh, recently, and, and we believe we'll be able to provide some uh, recreational programming later this summer. Great. Well, thank you for opening the dog park. Uh, really, uh, we've been hearing, I think, about that. It was, I'm, I'm glad. How's that working out? I, I, it, it's it's working out very well. It, it provided some additional space for our park visitors. We were expecting a, a big uh, turnout uh, that weekend, and I think that turnout did occur. Uh, you know, regarding particularly recreational facilities and the guidance from the governor, uh, she recently provided guidance on tennis courts. So we're looking at that and, and, and doing what we can to reopen our, our tennis courts. Good. I know former counselor Paul Wolf is following that one real closely. He's a tennis, a longtime tennis player. All right. Any any questions for the manager? Hey, thank you very much, Mr. Powers. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, anyone else? All righty. I've got a couple of proclamations for this evening. Uh, whereas the 1990 passage of an amendment to a joint resolution of Congress, President George H.W. Bush declared the month of May Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, noting the significant contributions in science, commerce, education, and the arts made by Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Whereas Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have demonstrated their dedication to ideals upon which the United States was founded, and have worked for the advancement of human rights and democratic ideals throughout the world. And whereas Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders have a proud legacy of service and dedication to our community, including the Marshallese Islander and Micronesian Islander communities. And whereas we recognize Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders whose love of family and community have helped to sustain our city, particularly through the commitment of the Micronesian Islander community, MIC Nick, and Paradise of Samoa. And whereas the city is grateful to the members of the Mayor's International Council who highlight the heritage of the Asian American and Pacific Islander communities, now therefore I, Chuck Bennett, Mayor of the City of Salem, do hereby proclaim May 2020 as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, and ask that residents of Salem join me in this special tribute to celebrate the contributions of Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. And I'll be uh, giving this proclamation in recognition of the work done by Councillor Leung with the Micronesian Islander community. So uh, thank you, Councillor Leung, for all the work you've done on this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, may I have a moment to say something? You certainly can. Thank you. Um, so first off, I would like to thank um, you, um, Mayor and City Council, for today's proclamation, recognizing May as Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Um, Asian Pacific um, encompasses all of the Asian continents and the Pacific Islanders of Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. And like most commemorative months, Asian Pacific Her American Heritage Month originated within Congress. Normally, when we were reading this proclamation, we would have our Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander community members joining us to celebrate within the uh, council chambers. Unfortunately, COVID-19 made that impossible this year. And I'm hopeful though that next year we'll be able to be together in the same room, in the same space, um, celebrating this um, the month together. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you for all your work on this. Uh, I have one second one. Um, Whereas celebrating 56 years as a national organization, Community Action has made essential contributions to individuals and families across the country by creating economic opportunities and strengthening communities. And whereas Community Action 
is a robust state and local force connecting people to life-changing services and creating pathways to prosperity. And whereas in the Salem area, Mid Willamette Valley Community Action builds and promotes stability as an essential aspect of enabling and enhancing our community. And whereas Mid Willamette Valley Community Action promotes and delivers broad based solutions to challenges that support more opportunities for families and children to succeed. And whereas insisting on engaged participation. Mid Willamette Valley Community Action strives to ensure that all community sectors have a voice and will be heard. Now, therefore, I, Chuck Bennett, Mayor of the City of Salem, do hereby proclaim May 2020 as Community Action Month. It's going to be a busy month here. And call upon all Salem residents to recognize Community Action's 56th anniversary as a national organization, as well as Mid Willamette Community Action Action's exceptional work that makes Salem a better place for all of us to live. And I'll be passing this proclamation along to Jimmy Jones, director of the Mid Willamette Valley Community Action and his staff, who we all know work tirelessly in behalf of Salem's most vulnerable residents through their ARCHES program. So thank you very much. Okay. We will move along to the consent calendar, Councillor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move approval of the consent calendar with the following exceptions. Item 2.3C pulled by Councillor Kayser with assists from Lewis and Anderson. Item 2.3E pulled by Councillor Anderson. Item 2. Point, uh, I'm sorry, 2.3A. Uh, counselor pulled by Councillor Kayser, 2.3B pulled by Councillor Kayser, and 2.3H pulled by Councillor Anderson, and 2.3J pulled by Councillor Anderson. And 2.3E, do you have anyone pulling that? Anderson. Okay. Okay, so we have 2.3A, 2.3B, 2.3C, 2.3E, 2.3H and 2.3J being pulled. I got that right? I believe so. Okay. So you wanna make a motion on what's left? I need a second. Uh, I moved approval already. Second. Second by Kayser. All right, that leaves us with item 2.1A, the May 11th, 2020 draft city council minutes. Item 2.1B, the May 11th draft 2020 city council work session minutes. Item 2.2A adopts resolution 2020-21, amending resolution 2017-50 to update the city's public records policy. Item 2.2B, dedication of public right-of-way on Four Point Street Northeast. Item 2.2C, transfer of fiscal year 2020 general fund budget appropriations. And item 2.3D, amendment to purchase and sale agreement with Westwood Homes, LLC. Item 2.3F is an intergovernmental agreement with the Marion County with Marion County for grant funding for economic development activities. Item 2.3G is an amendment to lease with Rudy's Steakhouse LLC. Item 2.3I is regarding fire and police management compensation. And that concludes the consent agenda. Very good. Could I could someone tell me what the just maybe the very short version of what changes are going on in our public records policy? Just a real short version of it. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, Atchison. Atchison, City Attorney. So um, the last legislative session uh, changed uh, a number of uh, the public records laws. The main purpose of this change is to update um, our policy so it's consistent and making those references to the state laws. In addition, uh, the city has been working uh, diligently on providing an, an online public records portal that's gonna go live in June. And this will allow uh, members of the public uh, to uh, submit a request online and get the records online and pay online. So we needed to make some updates to the policy to respond to that. So this will generally make it easier for the public to get a hold of uh, documents they're seeking or records they're seeking? It should. It should make it a lot easier and a lot quicker. A lot cheaper? Um, in some cases, if the records are easily available and it's easier for us to upload them, there's, there's less copying involved. 
Um, so less time for us to research them. So the, the, the staff work still needs to be done to find the records, um, but uh, the transaction costs will go down a lot. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions on the consent calendar? Okay, if the recorder would please call the roll. Councilor Nordyke. Aye. Councilor Lewis. Aye. Councilor Kayser. Aye. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Nanke is absent. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councilor Osik. Aye. Councilor Hoy. Aye. And Mayor Bennett. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, we have a public hearing, uh, number 20-187. Okay, the City Council will now conduct a public hearing concerning amendments to the 2015-2019 Consolidated Plan, Federal Program Citizen Participation Plan, 2018 Annual pa Action Plan, and 2019 Annual Action Plan. The hearing will begin with the staff presentation. Good evening, Mayor Bennett, Council. I'm Shelley Ahinger, Federal Programs Manager in the Urban Development Department. I will share my screen with you so that you can um, see tonight's presentation. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is to provide an opportunity for the public to hear and comment on the proposed amendments to the 2015-2019 Consolidated Plan, the Citizens Participation Plan, the 2018 and 2019 Community Development Block Grant Annual Action Plans, which include resources to address the impact of COVID-19 on the Salem community. The proposed amendments uh, include $1.3 million in CDBG resources. The CDBG projects recommended fall into the priority areas of addressing homelessness, increasing affordable housing, looking at economic development opportunities to support micro businesses and additional supportive services for those persons who are low to moderate income. We will begin with amendment two to the consolidated plan. The consolidated plan did not anticipate that we would be experiencing the coronavirus. And it did not include that we would need additional support such as food, mortgage or rent payments, or assistance for small businesses to keep them from having to close. Therefore, we would like to add those things to the consolidated plan so that the annual action plan can reflect what the community needs are today versus what the community needs were in 2015. In addition to that, we are mod asking to modify the citizen participation plan in as much as when the CARES Act was enacted, the supplementary funding HUD also provided some regulatory relief to ensure that the funds were available to the community as soon as possible. Two of the waivers provided by HUD allowed the city to reduce the public notice period from 30 days to five days. In addition, it allowed for virtual meetings and both of those are reflected in the proposed amended particip citizen participation plan. Amendment number two to the 2018 annual action plan includes increased funding for garden services Incorporated and Integrated Services for Living. Both received previous allocation of funding, but due to the increased rate and construction cost, and because these are both Davis Bacon wage uh, projects, their costs have increased and they've asked for some additional gap financing. Therefore, $60,000 is being proposed to be added to the garden uh, services as they complete some of the recycling center modernization, as well as 
$101,530 to rehab homes for persons living with disabilities. Amendment number three to the 2019 Annual Action Plan, uh, the sources include some funds from the Salem Housing Authority's 2019 allocation for the rehabilitation of Yaquina Hall. I think that the community is aware that there has been a pause in getting that project uh, to uh, begin. And in the meantime, the community needs the money today. And in Sal Salem Housing Authority understood this need and therefore we've requested that that $451,000 be used today and that we would backfill that with the 2021 allocation so that that much needed project could proceed. In addition to that, we had $73,000 in undesignated resources from our 2019 allocation, plus HUD provided us $775,837 in new uh, CDBG funds to address COVID-19 uh, impact in the community. That, uh, those were the sources of funds. And then these are some of the uses for that 2019 AAP amendment. Of course, the city will need some resources because we're going to increase the number of programs that we will be running. And therefore, there's an allocation in there for the city program administration. Cities allowed up to 20% of the resources to uh, operate programs. In addition to that, we have some new programs. Again, the emergency mortgage assistance program, micro business assistance, additional resources for meals on wheels so that our seniors can get additional um, food delivered to their home, and then some rental and utility assistance programs based upon the fact that there was an executive order of the governor where there was a rent moratorium for both residential and commercial properties, uh, and they have been in place since April, and we anticipate that they will uh, go until the end of the month of June. We feel that we need to keep a balance just in case there's another activity that arises that we haven't yet experienced through this COVID um, pandemic. And so there will be a little bit over $400,000 set aside for future needs. And we will come back to the council as well as to the public in regards to what those resources would be uh, spent on. Our public process, uh, as we talked earlier about a five-day uh, comment period, it ended on Friday, May the 22nd, uh, and then the staff led a virtual public comment session on May 20th, uh, and then tonight's public hearing is the third opportunity for the community to provide any input in regards to uh, what we're proposing to do. There was a legal notice published in the paper of greatest community circulation. This was placed on the city's website, as well as notices on the city's social media sites. Uh, it was also in community connection uh, on the 15th of May. Now I'd like to talk a little bit more about some of the programs that we're proposing to do and who are some of the entities we're proposing to uh, grant these resources to. The Salem Housing Authority has stepped up to the plate once again in regards to funding the, uh, or providing the funds for the mortgage payment program to low-income households. We can pay up to three months of someone's mortgage if we're able to determine that those individuals have been unable to afford their mortgage due to the loss of income and or a reduction in the hours in which they had previously been working. In addition to that, the Micro Business Assistance Program Willamette Workforce Partnership has stepped up and said, yes, we will run your Micro Business Assistance Program. We will look at assisting those businesses between uh, zero and five employees with uh, those things that were unanticipated costs associated with COVID, including 
their lease payments, uh, utilities, because even though the community businesses were shut down, those things continue to accrue. We also know that they will be mandated to reopen by making sure that they comply with the social distancing rule, which includes additional cleaning requirements, some protective personal equipment or PPE, and some increased payments for frontline staff. And these resources are uh, suggested to be at $3,000, up to $3,000. With that, we can help approximately 60 uh, micro business owners. As I discussed earlier, Meals on Wheels provides a nutritious meal to seniors. Uh, as well as daily visits. Because they are in a vulnerable population, we don't want them to be out and about in the community. And therefore, this is a way for them not only to get the meal, but also get a daily visit and a safety check, a wellness check. So we are uh, pleased to be able to help Marion Pope Food Share, who is a wonderful partner in providing um, nutrition, not only for seniors, but also for other, uh, others in the community. The uh, rent and utility assistance program would be approximately $325,000. This is in addition to what the state is providing through our partner uh, community action agency. We will have uh, in place a way to make sure that duplicate services are not provided to the same family. These resources will be paid directly to the landlord as the mortgage payments will be paid directly to the mortgage company. We can pay up to three months of COVID related rental arrears for eligible income households. We are really pleased that we were able to get three new uh, subrecipients to assist us in making sure that the money got to uh, culturally specific uh, uh, organizations who will make sure that we meet our fair housing and equity uh, lens from which we work from uh, within the city. Seed of Faith Ministries, Mano a Mano, the Salem Housing Authority, and IBC, or Island Boy Camp, are the four entities which we will be working with to get these resources to our community members. Next steps. Should council approve tonight's uh, um, proposed amendments. Uh, we will then submit those amendments to HUD for review and their approval, complete some environmental reviews as well as sub-recipient agreements. And it's our target date to have some of these projects and programs implemented by mid-July. Of course, the staff will provide ongoing monitoring, technical assistance, and program evaluation with the report back to the public and council in August of 2021. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Um, this is Councilor Leon. I do have um, one question. It's it's on the um, report on page five on the rental <coughs> assistance programs. Um, how were um, the uh, several of those groups um, identified as uh, groups in need? of, of uh, financial assistance? And how will they, um, the second question to that would be, um, what are the reporting requirements in terms of what they would need to report back and how they utilize uh, the funds? Uh, thank you, Councillor. Seed of Faith Ministries, uh, Mano a Mano and Salem Housing Authority, along with Island Boy Camps, we went to one of our partners, the school district, and asked them who were some of the entities that they worked with. Those were three that they were familiar with. When, uh, on June the 8th, you'll get our 2020, 2024 consolidated plan. And you will notice that during the analysis of impediments to fair housing, it was determined that uh, persons of color were not accessing some of the resources that the city had available. And these were three culturally focused organizations. I had personally worked with Island Boy Camp myself, so I was familiar with them. 
and their work that they had been doing, but the school district had also, through their Office of Equity and Cultural Advancement, had also worked with them. The same thing with Seed of Faith Ministries. Now, in regards to how they will receive and have received documents that will have self-certifications for the individuals who are going to be uh, participating in the program. They al we also will be submitting quarterly reports to the staff and we will be doing monitoring at their sites if possible uh, with social distancing in mind to make sure that the programs are meeting the needs of the community population as designed by the federal government. Any other questions, Councilor Leung? Did you have anything else? No, that was the main one. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, did we have any public comment, Shelley, that you need to share with us? I'm going to push that off to Kristen because she's been okay. <laughs> thank you. Good evening, Kristen Rutherford, Urban Development Director. We do have the public comment that was attached and received prior to this meeting. Uh, we have no new public comment that occurred during the meeting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councilor Hoy, do you want to? I'm going to close. If there's no more question, I'm going to close this public hearing. Councilor Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we adopt the amendments to the 2015 2019 consolidated plan, citizens' participation plan, 2018 annual action plan and 2019 annual action plan and direct staff to submit the AAP amendments and required forms to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Second. Second by Anderson. Any discussion, Councillor? Okay. Uh, if no. the recorder would please call the roll. Councillor Lewis? Aye. Councillor Kayser? Aye. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Nenke is absent. Councillor Leung? Aye. Councilor Osik? Aye. Councilor Hoy? Aye. Councilor Nordyke? Aye. And Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay, motion passes. All righty, very good. Go to special orders of business. First up is Councilor Anderson. You unmute yourself. I thought I did, but my very good. Yeah, my fingers didn't hit the right button. Ah, okay. Um, yes, I move that the, um, the council approve a proclamation declaring the first Friday in June to be National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Second. Second by Hoy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do have some words. Sure. Um, um, I'm not going to add to what uh, we've gotten, I don't know, a half dozen emails or so from Moms Demand Gun Action, which is the prime mover behind this. And I'm not going to add to anything they said. I just am going to point out that um, we uh, have had some mass shootings in Oregon. And the first one goes back to 1977, where six were killed outside of Klamath Falls nightclub. Then 1981, which some of you may remember, five were killed and 18 were wounded in Salem in a crowded bar. Uh, 1984, one was killed, one was wounded, plus a suicide at Austin Stadium. In 1998, four were killed, 25 were wounded. That's the Kip Kinkle, Kingle, Kinkle episode at Thurston High School, where I have friends who had children who were in the cafeteria that day. 2007, 10 wounded at a high school in Gresham. 2009, two killed, seven wounded, and suicide at a nightclub in Portland. 2012, two killed, one wounded, one suicide at Clackamas Town Center. 2014, one wounded, one killed at Reynolds High School. 2015, um, nine killed and nine wounded plus the suicide at Umcock Community College. So. Yes, this is a national problem, but it's also a problem that's here in Oregon. And it seems to me that uh, uh, the least we could do is, uh, is pass this proclamation and then also urge people to wear orange on um, January 5th. 
June 5th. June 5th, yeah, thank you. You bet. You can wear it on January 5th too, but June. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. Any, any further discussion? Okay, if the, uh, if the recorder would call the roll. Councilor Kayser? Aye. Councilor Anderson? Aye. Councilor Nanke's absent. Councilor Leung? Aye. Councilor Osik? Aye. Councilor Hoy? Aye. Councilor Nordyke? Aye. Councilor Lewis? Aye. And Mayor Bennett? No. Hey, motion passes. So we're all done. Now we'll move on to the, Councillor Anderson, I think you're on for the evening now. Well, we'll start with Kayser on two. Yeah, not completely, Councillor Kayser and Councillor Lewis also pulled some of the same. Very good. Councillor Kayser, we'll let you go first. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I pulled the, these property acquisitions from Marine Drive um, and procedurally, I'm not sure how we, do we'll this do one, at a, one at a time. Right. So I move I move staff recommendation on um, item 2.3A. Second. Second. Second by Anderson. Was that you? No. Lewis. 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 Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, so I, I pulled these just so we could talk about them because I, I feel like they're a long time coming a little bit <laughs> since our 2008 bridges and streets bond. Um, I have a few questions, but let me truly unmute myself here. There we go. I have both hands available. Uh, so I think these are more going to be directed at, um, I guess it would be Director Fernandez, even though Director Rutherford is identified on the staff report. So whoever would like to jump in, but. Um, a couple of questions. The first is that this is great that we're acquiring the right of way for these three properties. My question is, what's the plan for acquiring the additional right of way? Do we do we have a plan or a strategy in place for doing that? My understanding is that these uh, property owners are the willing sellers at this point, but we may have not made contact with all of the property owners along the right of way. Um, but could could you talk about? What, what the plan is after these purchases and, and how much money we have left out of our streets and bridges bond um, and what, how does the future look for getting the rest of Marine Drive uh, acquired? Uh, Clint Dameron can explain uh, to council the procedures we took for, uh, per the council direction regarding property acquisitions. So Clint? Clint, would you start off with the Clarks? That's the motion we've got on the table just to understand how you, how you came to work with them. Sure. Um, so we've been working on and off with the Clarks on multiple issues over the last 10 years that I've been around. Um, the Clark family, uh, they actually, the Clark family has two different uh, ownerships. Uh, the one under consideration tonight is the mother and the father, Don and Mary Clark, and they have a very large parcel and the biggest impact to their parcel, um, which because Marine Drive goes right through where their house is located. So this is by far the biggest impact. Uh, and take. Um, worked with them, did a full appraisal on this property because of the, the impact. Uh, negotiated back and forth with what do they want to keep, what do they want to sell, and we finally came to the arrangement uh, you see in the purchase and sale agreement. Okay, you want to move forward then to, I, 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 as I understand what, what the counselor asked is, what then about the uh, Barfnick? Uh, again, so Barf Neck is a little further south. Um, and to take a step back, actually, uh, we are acquiring a lot of these you'll see um, as a uh, street and roadway easement to avoid costly land use procedures right now with Polk County. Okay. So uh, we're going to pay fee value for the necessary right of way, um, but do it as an easement for now. And then we'll convert it to, to right of way at the proper time when the property gets developed by a third party, it'll save us a, a ton of money in staff time and cost. Okay, and the so, Spingath, what's the story uh, with that? Spingath is very similar to Barfneck. They are, uh, they adjoin um, just south of the Barfneck uh, property. So a very similar acquisition. Uh, these two, and a lot of the owners um, felt this way. The, 
Marine Drive right away is, is more or less right on the urban growth boundary line. So everything outside the urban growth boundary to the east is really unusable property. It's floodway, it's outside the UGB, and it didn't appraise much uh, on a per square foot basis, 37 cents a foot, which is nothing. Uh, so unless you're farming it, there's really not a whole lot of use for it. Um, so most folks we've talked to have said, I'll, I'll, I'll sell you the right away, but you need to take everything else to the east as well. So that's how we got into acquiring all this other land outside the UGB um, that's in the floodway that doesn't. And I, I think that the thing that is is most, if I understood what the counselor asked, and she'll correct me, but now what? Where are we now then moving forward? What's your plans? What are your contact strategies? Right, How so, do we work our way through this thing? Um, yeah, council's direction was to take the roughly $3.8 million uh, that was left over from the street and bridges bond and get the right of way we could, uh, strategically trying to get pieces that might have the most immediate impact. Um, out of the 17 or 18 uh, folks we contacted, we heard back from six. Uh, we have these three tonight. Uh, we may have two to three more in the next uh, next few months. And the rest did not, uh, you know, after multiple phone calls, uh, mailings didn't even respond to us. So um, in discussing with Public Works, there's a lot of uh, survey work and land use cost um, going into this on top of the, the right-of-way acquisition cost. So, um, Bear with me a second, let me pull up my budget spreadsheet. So after all these acquisitions and what we spent today and what we think we're gonna spend um, on survey work and land use, after all these three are done, if they, assuming they go through tonight, uh, we'll have about 1.1 million still available uh, to go out and, and try to hit the, the folks again to bring them to the table. Councilor Kayser, do you want to follow up with? Yes, I do. Um, thank you, Clint. Um, one of the, the things that came up recently is, and I think we saw it in a letter to the council from Steve Anderson, There, is, it sounds like there is desire on the part of neighbors, either within West Salem Neighborhood Association or a group that are just interested in seeing Marine Drive getting constructed or right away acquired or constructed ultimately. Um, uh, their opportunity with the, the city to partner with a group like that, like West Salem Neighborhood or like the, the Friends of Marine Drive or, or whoever, because I think the feeling is they might be able to help uh, facilitate conversations with those property owners that have not responded to the city because they have those personal relationships with them um, just to get that conversation started. Um, I don't know if we've reached out already to them, but curious as to, that might not be typical, but it's kind of a, perhaps not a super typical situation either. All right, so the, uh, the group, Friends of Marine Drive, and I don't know how formal of a group they are, they contacted me uh, shortly after, I believe it was last June, when council gave us this direction. Uh, and then in talking with uh, the legal department, um, I was asked to communicate to them that the formation of any uh, citizen committee or group needed to be um, uh, run through the mayor's office. So that's what I communicated to them and Dan could jump in and correct me if I misspoke on that one. Nobody, nobody asked. And there. <laughs> so that, I mean, it sounds like that might be, I don't know so much a council direction, but some type of more formal direction would be needed then. I don't know exactly procedurally how that would how that would work or, have or call, what would be necessary. Have them call me. I mean, I'll fine with me if they set up an organization unless the city attorney jumps in and says he doesn't want one. Yeah, that's I what I communicated sense. to him. Yeah, just have them call me. Okay. I'm not sure what my role is in that, but hmm. okay. <laughs> uh, that's fine to me. So, and if I had, I had uh, one more question. Um, so, Clint, you were talking about the land east of Marine Drive, which is um, primarily just um, not floodway, but it's not, you can't really build anything on it. it, it um, most of it actually is floodway oh, and okay. outside the UGB. 
I know that there is some land there specifically that is um, essentially has not been touched um, because it's not farmable. It's not really usable in, in, in modern ways. Um, it's a pretty natural old growth habitat. And I know there is desire to protect that as natural area. Um, and I've actually been back there. It's quite beautiful, <laughs> really, for something so close to the city. Um, but knowing that some of this stuff is outside of the UGB, what is the process for bringing it into the city limits? And then I guess, what's the process for zoning that um, appropriately? Uh, in, in, and I don't know if you if you know Clint or um, others yeah. who are, I see are jumping on their video yeah. right now. <laughs> I would defer to uh, the uh, Community Development Department on zoning issues and annexation issues. Well, what is typically, how do we get that in the city? Is that a council action or? Would that come at a later date or? Um, uh, Dan Atkinson, city attorney, I think I can speak to that generally. So um, um, the city can annex uh, property that, that's outside the UGB. So technically we could proceed with an annexation now on properties there. Um, we couldn't develop it with an urban facility until it was uh, included within the UGB. And that requires a rather substantial land use process to, to expand it. Then I guess, sorry, the follow-up to that is, do we need to even do that if we want to preserve this? If there's desire to preserve this as a, just a natural space, is that even right. necessary? So, uh, several, several of the folks, I'm sorry, Kristen. I was going to say that we could also just put a conservation easement on it. Okay. So, yeah, so several of the folks had mentioned something like that. And, um, at that point in the negotiations, I said, you know, well, if you want to further restrict the rights we're purchasing, there would be an impact to the value we're paying for. And they understood that. And most people then said, oh, okay, proceed as planned. Um, but I did reiterate to them, you yeah. know, it's outside the UGB, it's in a floodway. Uh, and talking with Director Fernandez, you know, we have, the city has no plans to do anything with this property. You know, it's going to sit as natural property for as long as anybody could foresee. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, oh. Councillor Anderson. Unmute yourself, Tom. We're only talking about uh, uh, 2.3A, but appropriately so, the mayor sort of uh, expanded that because all three of these are pretty much connected. So I have some general questions. Um, a couple of them are panhandle lots. And is that a panhandle lot that e it goes over to Wallace Drive? And is that for the city, uh, uh, you know, for Marine Drive over to Wallace Drive? Or is it for the owners who want to get to some of their other property that they haven't sold to us? And I, I guess now I'm not so, a lot of that they're selling to us, it looks like, but we have this subservient property. And uh, could you explain all that? So uh, I think you're specifically talking about the Clark property okay. and the way it sits now, it does have a, a flagpole out to Wallace Road, which okay. is their, their only access to and from Wallace. So um, part of the deal we have with them, what they would get uh, an access easement over that flagpole uh, across the property we're buying all the way to the property they are keeping to the east. Okay. And then it's, uh, that easement will automatically extinguish when that portion of Marine Drive is constructed and they have other access uh, to got their it, land. Got it. So they own property on the, uh, further east from what we're already, what we're buying uh, in the, the floodplain sort of stuff. Correct, they, they desire to keep everything outside the UGB okay. because they do actively farm. So that explains the easement to me and that makes sense. It's easement until Marine Drive is built basically. Correct. And um, I couldn't, I looked at, MapQuest and Google Earth and all sorts of things, and I couldn't find Beckett Street. <laughs> so um, <laughs> Beckett Street is on. Uh, actually, let me share. Is that waiting screen. for Godot? Is that the same thing? If we're talking about playwrights, I think Beckett. <sighs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So Beckett Street um, is, if you can see my prop, my screen here. Not yet. Okay. Is it shown yet? Okay, yes. that, that answers my question completely. Okay, so 
Go ahead. Uh, Beckett Street right now, I believe, is, is in the TSP as part of the Marine Drive property. Um, this Beckett Drive actually splits. There's a couple of black property lines missing on this, this map. This black line here extends all the way over, as does this black line. So uh, the property line is right down the middle of Beckett, and it's meant to, to line up with this intersection here. Got it, got it. So it will be a way to go back and forth between Marine Drive and Wallace. Well, that's the thought. Uh, this, so the, where it says Beckett Street here, this is the Spingas property. Okay, got it. Yeah, no, I can see that the Spingas and the uh, uh, Barfneck uh, right. properties, they're contiguous to each other. Um, yeah, Barfneck is up here. Okay, so I so, that, that answers my other question that I was going to discuss and I don't have to now our our big uh, the discussion about buying right away on the cameo versus buying right away on fifth and where that shows up and so that is consistent with the council direction I believe that yeah. we want you to proceed with buying all the right away you can north of where uh, 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 Fifth Street or Cameo would connect into into uh, Marine Drive Okay, well, let me let me clarify real quickly. So Beckett Street, half of this is on the spin gas property. Okay. At this time, they did not wish to sell the Beckett Street property as it impacts their, okay. their house. Okay. So our deal with them is really just for this Marine Drive portion uh, but, and everything to the east. But in the future, we're going to work that out one way or the other. Right. right. They, they, wanted to, they wanted to discuss moving Beckett Street north or south somewhere else. Okay. And I, I said that's kind of out of the scope of what I was tasked to do. So sure, sure. Uh, no. at this time, we're just doing the Marine Drive proper. That, that dovetails into my other questions. I presume that some of the people who you've contacted who have not contacted you, we may end up with some sort of um, uh, uh, council action to go ahead and purchase that property. <laughs> I don't know why the term escapes me now, but you know, when we say we want to buy that property and we go, we- uh, Eminent domain. Is thank that you, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Once again, you saved me, eminent domain. <laughs> I presume we may end up in eminent domain. And then a follow-up question on that. We only have $1.1 million left and we certainly have spent a big chunk of it here, but I presume the other properties are going to be on the lower end of the price scale as opposed to uh, 1.35 uh, million dollars. Right, so the Clark property is A, it's one of the bigger properties and B, it involved a full take of a house. Okay. And a very large chunk of multifamily property. Okay. Councilor Lewis. Yes, thank you. Um, actually, if we could leave this uh, Clint on the screen, I think it'll help with my question. Um, I wanted to go back to, I think it was Councillor Kayser who mentioned that we had received a letter from uh, Steve Anderson, Friends at Marine Drive. And I'm, I'm confused by a couple of the statements uh, in the letter. Um, so I just want to verify, on the screen in front of us, the red dotted line including Beckett Street, is the layout, the layout for Marine Drive in the city's transportation plan, is that correct? That's correct. And the instruction that staff was given to purchase property uh, north of Fifth Street up to um, River Bend, that did not change the transportation plan, correct? Correct. If I wanted to change the transportation plan and do away with that part of Marine Drive that goes along the park and then ends up going north, how would I do that? Uh, I would defer to the city attorney or community development to answer that. I will uh, take a stab at that. You would uh, need to have council uh, approve a amendment to the uh, transportation system plan, which requires that would public hearing. Would that re that would require a public hearing? Correct. Thank you. Hey, anyone else? I'm just looking on this. So, Mr. Oh. Mayor, I could, if I could, there's been a couple of questions about acquiring. Um, Councilor Lewis just said North of Fifth Street. Uh, staff and I went back and listened to the original June direction 
Uh, and if anybody recalls, that was about a 30 or 40 minute conversation where it was uh, motions and second motions. So um, we gleaned that council directed us to acquire property from this location here, sure. which is where Marine, future Marine Drive meets future Fifth Avenue North. Okay. And uh, the letter uh, Councilor Kaser referred to, you know, some people said, no, it would also would include this piece here, this piece here, but not, you know, these pieces down here that actually have homes on them at this point. Okay. So okay. just to clarify, we were going under the assumption, council said from this point north. So we did okay. not contact anybody yeah. south of this intersection. Okay, very good. Uh, is Can you pull your, uh, your screen off then for a minute? Great, thank you very much. Councilor Kaser. Thank you. Well, with, with that kind of clarification, Clint, um, of how staff interpreted the motion, um, I, as the motion maker back in June, that's that was not my intent. <laughs> um, so that possibly will need clarification, I guess, coming from council. And I don't know exactly, again, the process for doing that. Um, I'm not going to try it on the fly here, but yeah, uh, I think I will be bringing back something soon to really clarify what my motion was last June um, so that that's clear. Great. Okay. Um, are, are we prepared then to vote on uh, 2A to 3A? I'm sorry. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, which is the staff recommendation, say aye. Or no. <laughs> I'm sorry, the recorder will call the roll. I apologize. Councillor Anderson? Aye. Councillor Nakey's absent. Councillor Leung? Aye. Councillor Osik? Aye. Councillor Hoy? Unmute. I thought I did. Aye. Councillor Nordyke? Oh, need to unmute. So sorry. I thought I was doing so well with that. I, I, I. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Lewis. Aye. Councillor Kayser. Aye. And Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Councillor Kayser, 2.3B. Your motion. I move staff recommendation on item 2.3B. Second. Second by Hoy. Need any further discussion on this? No, I don't have any further comment. Anyone else? Okay, mm -hmm. if you'd call the, oh, sorry, Councillor Nordyke. No, just briefly, just a comment. I see uh, these property purchases as steps in the right direction, both from a traffic congestion point of view and for creating more pedestrian, more bicycle access, just more alternative routes in general. So I'm happy to see that these are on the agenda. I was not around in June, obviously, but I'm delighted to see that they're on here tonight. And I really appreciate the thoughtful comments from my peers. And I'm ready to vote. Okay. Lewis, did you, were you raising your hand or? No, just uh, waving. Just waving, okay. Uh, if you'd call the roll. Hey, Councillor Nanke is absent. Councillor Leung. Aye. Councillor Osik. I'll go back. Uh, Councilor Hoy? Aye. Councilor Nordyke? Aye. Councilor Lewis? Aye. Councilor Kayser? Aye. Councilor Anderson? Aye. And I'll go back to Councilor Osik? Aye. And Mayor Bennett? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. We'll go to uh, 2.3C. I move staff recommendation for item 2.3C. Second. Second. Second by Anderson. I have no further comments. Okay. Okay. I don't see anyone else's hand up, so we'll have the recorder call the roll. Councillor Leung. Aye. Councillor Osik. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nord Nordyke. Aye. Councillor Lewis. Aye. Councillor Kayser. Aye. Councillor Anderson. Aye. Councillor Nakey is absent and Mayor Bennett. Aye. Okay, motion passes. We'll go to 2.3E, Councillor Anderson. Good 
You're on mute. Unmute, Tom. I've been trying to. Oh, okay. Uh, I move the staff recommendation. Second. Second by Hoy. Um, excuse me, I'm trying to find it here. Um, we had a discussion about this uh, earlier, um, and I, I just want to say that uh, um, the things that I say all the time about this, my two word mantra, hanging bridge, hanging bridge. But I think this is a very good situation. And um, my understanding is that this will also allow us to eventually, hopefully, uh, end up with a path that goes all the way from South Minto Brown Island Park all the way up to Riverfront Park, which should be terrific for recreation and family use, but it would also be terrific for a wonderful uh, bike commute path to get from South Salem without having to go on River Road, which especially going south is uh, pretty miserable. So I think this is a, a great thing. And thank you, uh, Mountain West, for their contributions of uh, the park property. Yeah, this is a, I, I just a, a little, this has been a, an important uh, uh, decision, really, by multiple city councils to keep heading down this direction, including the Hanging Bridge and the connections down to uh, the down to uh, Minto Island going south on the Slough side. It's very uh, gratifying to see this come to a realization after all these years. And uh, like Councillor Anderson, I wanna thank Mountain West for their generosity in uh, donating this property. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, if you'd call the roll. Councillor Osick. Aye. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke. Councilor Lewis. Aye. Councilor Kayser. Aye. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Nanke is absent. Councilor Leung. Aye. And Mayor Bennett. Aye. Motion passes 2.3H, Councilor Anderson. I move the staff recommendation. Second. Second by Hoy. Mr. Mayor, if I could speak just a little bit. This was a uh, uh, Shelley uh, gave a report about various things that relate to this as well. Um, I think this is wonderful and I really just brought it up so we can make sure it's published and uh, as widely as possible so everybody knows about this. And I know from the plan that there is a whole lot of work going on by um, um, the, the staff, the community development and urban renewal, I think, excuse me, and res, uh, um, responsible for allocation of these funds. And I also appreciate the fact that from the last meeting, we had some comments about we don't want it to be a race to, to file and how it's going to be on a lottery system, which is uh, basically the uh, most fair way to do it. So uh, I applaud the staff for getting these funds and I urge uh, every one of the small business uh, community and uh, in the affected areas to um, apply for a grant and hopefully we can get everybody something. So thanks. Yeah, I want to second uh, Councillor Anderson's comments just briefly. Uh, I want to really thank uh, Kristen Rutherford for the tremendous work she's done on really putting this together over the past several months, developing the strategy to get to the point that we could make this kind of uh, program available to small businesses, uh, uh, really tremendous use of, of both uh, uh, federal and local funds to create this kind of a, a program available. It took some really very, very hard work on her and her staff's part. So thank you very much, Kristen. It was really outstanding work. Uh, any, uh, any further discussion? All that well, we'll uh, we'll have the recorder <laughs> call the roll. Councillor Hoy. Aye. Councillor Nordyke. Aye. Councillor Lewis. Aye. Councillor Kayser. Aye. Councillor Anderson. Aye. 
Councilor Nake is absent. Councilor Leung? Aye. Councilor Osik? Aye. And Mayor Bennett? Aye. Motion passes. 2.3J, Councilor Anderson. Uh, I move staff recommendation. Second. There's really not much to say here. The same principles that we already discussed about in the motion we just passed apply here. Kudos again to staff and and um, request everybody out there who might be eligible for these grants to get them in. Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor, uh, we'll have the uh, <laughs> recorder call the roll. Councilor Nordyke. Aye. Councilor Lewis. Aye. Councilor Kayser. Aye. Councilor Anderson. Aye. Councilor Nanke is absent. Councilor Leung. Aye. Councilor Osik. Aye. Councilor Hoy. Aye. And Mayor Bennett. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, we have uh, information reports. Any questions, discussions? Councilor Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This relates to item 5B. We are now on a third request for a two year extension of the approval. Uh, so we're now, it was the, uh, the approval to do, I don't remember now what they wanted to do, but I think it was a partition. The, I hope they remember the approval was given in 2014. They came back in 2016 for two years. They came back in 2018 for two years. They're back in 2020 for two years. How long has this been going on and will it ever stop? Hi, so this is uh, this is Community Director Norman Wright. I wanna make sure, can everyone hear me first of all? <laughs> okay, great, thanks. So um, I have similar questions, Councillor Anderson. And so the staff report does reflect that there have been four extensions for 10 years total. And uh, I think it's safe to say that uh, from what we understand by our staff, that there have been no concerns or, or comments even offered by uh, the notified public. And so this is an extension to maintain flexibility for the property and the property owner until they find the right time. And we see no issue in continuing with these extensions for a previous approval. If it's okay with you, it's okay with me. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's find out if it's okay with everyone else. I guess we won't be voting. Thank you, though, Tom, for bringing that one up. It's always interesting to follow these historic partitioning events. Uh, any, uh, anything else? We are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>